complex problem in the world, there's a simple answer, and it's wrong. Okay? If you got a complex question, chances are it might have multiple parts. So what are you out to do? You're out to understand the question well enough and understand all your options well enough that you can see that sometimes two or three things taken together meet the multiple interests around what is the immediate question. Right? It might be one answer, it could be more than one. If we spend all of our time only looking for one, we're going to miss the fact that there might be more than one that can work together, right? So that's why we want you to look at multiple options. So, we've got the question, we've got the interest, understanding the question and reflecting on the interest, then we generate what are our options, okay? Now, chances are the first ones might come fast, right? But very well may be that if you go past the pause when you're brainstorming, you might come up with some other ones, right? Now, that doesn't mean just because they weren't at the top of your head that they're not good. It's just that problem solving is tough work, right? So now, whereas in the old days, if we were getting positional, right, I might be arguing for this, you might be arguing for that, now we have a list of seven possible answers, right, to this question that reflect in some way these underlying things that have to be reflecting in the answer to make it a good one. And we're going to see how that works in a minute. But now that we understand what's the question, what are the interests, what are the options, now we're going to see a vignette you haven't seen yet. So what's happening? Well, I would like to talk to Dr. Roberts about taking Dr. Black's place on my committee. Why would you want to make a change? Well, I've been finding it really difficult to work with Dr. Black. And I've had several classes with Dr. Roberts, and I've had really good experiences in them. Hmm. Well, I, I don't know. I don't think you should really base your decision just on the coursework. The reason I pushed Dr. Black for your committee is that he is really an expert in your research area. I know he can be a real bear to work with. You may, you may find him cantankerous, but I think in the long run he's going to be the best person. I really can't see changing at this point. What about how I feel about the committee? We have the issue, who's on the committee and who decides, right? Now, who are the stakeholders in this case? Who are the stakeholders? Who are the ones closest to the epicenter of the issue? Okay, him and her, right? Okay. Then let's broaden it out a little bit. If you go out of the loop, who's Black. 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 Roberts, right? Committee. Right? And it very well may be the other committee members, because we don't know who those other people are, but we assume that they exist, right? <laughs> right? Now, and you could go out further. Who who's out further? Maybe the department. The department? University. University? the ombudsperson, you know, it could be a variety of people who are, you know, in the out of the rings, right? Others? Family. That is what's very You bet. Family is an extremely important stakeholder in this, right? Always, right? And you, you could wonder that if there's precedent, again, it very well may affect other students, right? Especially on the who decides question, you know? And when we get to the issue of how clear we are in expectations, which is still coming in a couple minutes, then it really affects broadly a number of people, right? Let's go to the interests. Now, remember the key here. This is a combined issue, I mean, an interest list, right? Because as we've already found out, that some of them are common, which doesn't matter uh, all that much. And they're still on the list. 
But the important thing is that the entire list of interests is used for the purpose of trying to understand what makes a good answer, right? So we're not breaking them out by stakeholder, but what are the interests that you hear in this? What are the things that have to be reflected to make an answer a good one, to make an option a good one? So why don't we come here? What, what interests did you hear in, in what they said? What do they want? It was important that the committee members have this expertise. Okay. It was important that the student was comfortable working with them. Okay. Progress in the research. Okay, the progress in the research. Other things? Relationship with the professors. Mm -hmm. Relationships. Oh, relationships with professors. Now let's talk about that one for a second. So, are you talking about the relationship between her and the professors? Or are you talking about the relationship between professor to professor? Professor to professor. All of them. Both. Both. This is what we often call the great unknowable or unsayable. Right? Because maybe there are things that the student doesn't know. Okay? Maybe there are things about Dr. Roberts that the student doesn't know. Like every time Dr. Roberts is on a committee, he or she throws grenades and and none of those committees ever work together well, right? Maybe there are other things going on in the situation that frankly we just don't know, right? So relationship between the, the professors is very, very important stuff. And my wife is very famous for saying at this at Michigan State, fill in the blank. The only good dissertation is a done dissertation. <laughs> <laughs> so completion is an interest, right? Yeah, everybody, yeah. everybody has an interest in the student uh, right, progressing and everything else. So there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff, right? There. Let's jump to the options list. What are the options? Okay, so option number one is you place that professor with the other professor. Blackout, Robert's in. Yeah. Right? So that's one option. What's another option? Both. Add, add, Roberts. Okay, so a both yeah. and, right? Roberts and Black. Yeah. None. <laughs> None of the above. There's a number of options, okay? Now the question that you have to ask yourself is, how do you choose? Okay, we're going to show you how that works. Because it's all about, throw one of these, whoa, here they come again. It's about evaluation because it's about throwing these against this and these, right? Now, it's going to look really mechanical. I have to warn you. And what I'm going to say to you is very simple. You go through the mechanism a few times and you get used to it. And as Karen and I both tell people, this becomes a habit of mind, okay? The habit of mind that we're out to do is make sure that the first thing you say is, what's the issue? What are the interests? Not worrying about who the stakeholders are, but, but understanding that there are a lot of people and there are a lot of interests. What are those interests? Quickly brainstorming out options and then starting the wheel. So we take option number one, go up, and lo and behold, it meets a number of the interests. We keep it on the list. Then we take two up and, oh, what? Oh, oh boy, it doesn't even answer the question. So it falls up. <laughs> Take three up. And it meets a few of the interests. They keep on the list. Four. Handles a few. Five goes up. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Didn't even answer any of the interests. Six goes up. Answers a few. Seven goes up. 